All right, we want to uh, greet everyone in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, and we are grateful to the Lord for everyone that's here today. All right, so if you have your Bibles, let's go to the 12th chapter of the book of Romans. Is everybody there? We're going to start reading at verse 9. It says, Let love be without dissimulation. Abhor that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. So you, everybody see that? Verse 9, that word dissimulation means hypocrisy. Let love be without hypocrisy. Abhor that. In other words, shun or hate that which is evil, cleave to that which is good. Does everybody see that? So when, when that talks about abhorring that which is evil, and then it goes on to say, cleave to that which is good, it means those things that will stick to you, you're supposed to get away from those things, not abhor that which is evil in other people, but abhor that which is evil which, what, that's trying to cling on to you. And then it says, but you hold on to, in other words, cleave to that which is good. So these two things, uh, it shows us, uh, par partially what the Lord is saying when he said, let love be without hypocrisy or dissimulation. Uh, one, of the, one of the reasons why um, so many marriages fail, especially in this country, is because people have hypocrisy in their love. Now, let me explain what he means when he says that, hypocrisy. I can love you as long as you're doing good. I can love you as long as you're doing what I want you to do or as long as you're acting right. But I can't love you when you're doing wrong. In other words, if your love can go up and down based on uh, an individual's actions, then that's love, that's having love with hypocrisy. It's not real love. It's love that's based off of you and your feelings. Does everybody understand that? Jesus said, if you love them that love you, what thanks have you? <laughs> you don't get brownie points for loving people that love you. But when you love your enemies, that's what God pays attention to. Because that's God's love. That's real love. Does everybody understand that? So it tells us to let love, to let love be without dissimulation. In other words, without hypocrisy. It ought not to be going up and down based on what people are doing. Look at what it says now, verse 10. Be kindly affectioned one to another with brotherly love in honor, preferring one another. Not slothful in business, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord. Rejoicing in hope, patient, everybody, now rejoicing in hope, does everybody understand that? When you're talking about hoping, uh, when you're talking about hope, you're talking about something that's in the future. It says to rejoice in something in the future, the outcome of something. That's where you get your joy from. Not from what's right in front of you. Not from what you're facing right now. Not from what you're dealing with right now. Your hope is in, your, your rejoicing comes from something that has been promised. Something that you can see by faith. That's what you rejoice in. Does everybody understand that? Rejoicing in hope, patient 
in tribulation, in other words, while you're going through what you're going through, it, it takes patience. Because when you lose patience in, tribu in tribulation, then it's impossible for you to rejoice in hope. You will not rejoice in something in the future if the devil's still in your patience now. Does everybody understand that? Continuing instant in prayer. In other words, diligently in prayer. Now, this, now that tells us how we maintain <laughs> what we just finished saying. You rejoice in hope. You can rejoice in hope because of your prayer life. Does everybody understand that? You can remain patient through tribulation because of your prayer life. Verse 13, distributing to the necessity of saints given to hospitality. Does everybody see that? Now that shows us how we're supposed to be as believers. All of these things go together. Distributing to the necessity of the saints. Given to all of this stuff goes together. You show me a person that's not rejoicing in hope, that's not patient in tribulation, and I'll show you a selfish person. They're not going to distribute to the necessity of the saints. They're not going to be given to hospitality. They're not going to invite nobody over. They're not going to do none of that. Does everybody understand that? All of that goes together. You got to be a whole Christian. <laughs> and when you lose one facet of it, then the devil starts, whatever was there that was there, the devil starts stripping that away. I've seen that happen over the years. People get burned by somebody, the, the most given person in the world, and they get burned, and that's all it takes. And from that point on, folks that meet them after that would have no idea how much of a heart they really had. Does everybody understand? And, and, and what you did years ago don't count. I, I remember when. That was, you, go to, you stand before God with I remember when. Everybody understand that? All of this go together. You can't pick and choose. We're going over several things in these group of scriptures, and you can't pick and choose which one you're going to grow in because, and which one you're going to let go of. If you let go of one of them, you're going to miss it all. I don't care how much of a person. I, I invite people over all the time, and you'll lose that if, you, if you're not patient in tribulation. You'll lose that if you're not rejoicing in hope. The devil come to strip you of everything. Not just the one part that the Lord is trying to heal you in. <laughs> Does everybody understand that? And so, look, distributing to the necessity of saints, giving to hospitality, bless them which do what? Curse you. Bless them which persecute you. Does everybody see that? Do what now? Bless them which persecute you. Bless and do what? Curse not. Does everybody see you? So this, this, this lets us know when people come to persecute, uh, it's the devil. And we bless them. That's how we get over that hump. We bless them when we realize, now this is for spiritually minded people. How many of you ever had a child you had to spank for something they did wrong? Uh, how many of you had other children that were around at some point, but they didn't do anything, but the child that did wrong, you had to spank them? So how many of you just made a vow, you know what, from now on, when you do something, I'm going to whoop you? Would that be unjust? The same way it's unjust when the devil have people blind doing stuff and you, you ready to whoop them. You get on your knees and get after the devil. Does everybody understand that? <laughs> we have to remain believers while we're going through. We have to remain Christians. If I don't know anything else, I know this. The devil is bothered when you give your life to the Lord. And one of the things he, he can do, I think, I, I believe, one of the first things he do when you come to give your life to the Lord, because I, I've seen it, I can always tell when somebody's new in the Lord. They just, they got the joy of the Lord. 
But over time, over time, they become just as bitter as the world. You, you wouldn't, and, and, I, and I don't mean from having conversations with the people, these people. I can just look at people and tell when they're living for the Lord, they got joy. And I'm not talking about the fake joy where they're trying to make flesh happy, and as long as flesh happy, I'm happy. I mean, they have, they, it's, there's something on the inside of them that's shining. That's how we all start off if we really are living for God. But over time, something happens. The devil begins to push and push. You know, the devil's a bully. What makes a bully a bully? A bully picks on people that ain't bothering him at all. And that devil push and push. And, you, and so what happens, how many of you have ever been bullied in your life? I mean really bullied. I don't mean just, you know, somebody said something wrong to you or bad, you know, that hurt your feelings. I mean really bullied where somebody was trying to pull something out of you. And what happened when you gave in to that? You are not the same. You'd have come out better running than balling up your fist and striking back and showing everybody you're not a pushover. When you give your life to the Lord, you're telling the world, I'm a pushover. You can push me all you want, and I'm going to pray for you. Amen. Why are you kicking me? I'm going to pray for you. Does everybody understand? <laughs> Don't you ball your fist up. Does everybody understand? Let's go and keep reading here. Uh, verse 15, rejoice with them that do rejoice and weep with them that weep. It, it, does everybody understand what that's saying there? When you lose your joy in the Lord, you lose the uh, ability, and, w and when you're not patient in, in tribulation, you lose the ability to be able to even identify with people. When you lose patience, a funny thing happens, all attention is on you. And that, that takes you away from the connection that you're supposed to have with people. So somebody else, somebody can be sitting right on side of you crying because they lost their mama and you're, you're sitting there thinking, well, you know what, I, I got my own problems. Yeah, I'm sorry your mama died, but we all die. We lose the ability to be able to identify with people. Jesus Christ said, uh, for us to love one another. Why? Because by this, men will know that you are my disciples when you have love one for another. So in other words, when we are not patient in tribulation and when we are, are um, not rejoicing in hope, we cease from being a disciple of Jesus Christ. Because to be a disciple of Jesus Christ, you first of all have to walk in love. You can't lose these things. And, that's, and the devil knows that. That's the reason why he comes so hard when he comes. But see, the first thing we have to realize is that it's the devil. We're commanded to love our enemies. Does everybody understand that? That's a command. All right, so verse, so everybody understand that now, that when you, uh, you lose the ability to, to be able to identify with other people, that, that, that you, you become stoic. Selfish people, uh, you know, they're robots. Now, they'll get emotional about their own stuff. When something bothers them, you know, they, they, they can definitely identify with that. But when it comes to other people, they don't, they, don't, they don't know how to put, the, you know, it's got to be done happen to them. Now, they'll boo, you know, it, it, so say, for instance, you're sitting on the side of somebody, they're crying because their mama died. If they mama died, they'll cry. I know what you're going through. But they ain't crying for the, they, this person, they're crying for themselves. You done took me back. That's where the world is. I can identify now. I understand. What, I understand what you're going through, and I'm gonna cry all over, cry all, all over again. But it ain't for you; it's for me. Look at what that says. There, rejoice with with them, with them, not by yourself. Rejoice with them that do rejoice, and weep with them that weep. 
That's how you know you have the love of God. When something good happened to somebody, it's like it happened to you. When something bad happened to somebody, it's like it's happening to you. Does everybody understand that? You see how the Lord, you know, it's all kind of stuff going on under the hood of your vehicle. You don't, you don't know until that computer sends a signal to your dashboard saying, check engine. And at first it's orange or amber. And so you got a little while. I, I, you know, I, my paycheck come, I got four days before I get paid. I, you know, I can skedaddle on down the road before I, I take it to the mechanic. Oh, but when it turns red, you best pull over. <laughs> or, or you're going to be buying another vehicle. Does everybody understand that? And so in this group of scriptures, we're in the red. You, you have no idea what's going on in your heart until you read this group of scriptures and see where you are in it. Can I rejoice with people that rejoice? Can I weep with people that weep? Does everybody understand that? Am I still blessing people that persecute me? Am I still rejoicing in hope? Or am I downtrodden by what's right in front of me? Am I patient in tribulation? In other words, do I feel like I'm about to lose it because of what the devil's got right in front of me right now? Does everybody see that? Let's read verse 16. Be of the same mind one toward another. Everybody see that? Mind not high things, but condescend to men of low estate. Be not wise in your own conceits. So these group of scriptures, what we just read, we have to drop what naturally comes to us to be able to function in the things of God. It, it, to flesh, it don't come natural to bless people that persecute us. It does not come natural. Uh, but that's the reason why there's a term called crucifying flesh. That's the reason why the Lord tells us to deny ourselves. You, you, everybody understand what that means? Every day something can come up in our lives where we can bless or we can curse. We are still free agents. We still have the ability to decide what we're going to do. Am I going to bless you? Now, my, my first reaction is, uh, my first thought is to curse you. That's my first thought because I'm still in flesh when you do something against me. But then I remember, I heard this word this morning. I have to do what it says. And what happens is, as you continue to live and grow in the Lord, pretty soon, your first reaction is to bless. Because now flesh is crucified. Amen. Does everybody understand that? Listen, if following the Lord was easy, everybody would be doing it. But you give in, you, you, you just backslide just in one little area. Well, you don't know what I'm going through. You ain't never been through this. You know, then pretty soon you'll look just like unbelievers. Pretty soon you'll be cold-hearted. You'll just be out for self. That's the trick of the devil. He got a whole world that's selfish. And he got a bunch of believers that are bitter. Which makes them look like the world. When you are bitter, you look like the world. I don't care how much, how much water you can walk on. If you're bitter, you look like the world. Does everybody understand that? All right, let's read verse 17. Recompense to no man. What? Does everybody see that? Recompense, don't pay nobody back. Evil. Recompense, good. Pay them, good. Everybody understand? Provide things honest in the sight of all men. If it be possible, if, if. If it be possible. Now, you, you, you see how Paul stretched this scripture out. We're going to stretch it out so you understand how he's stretching it out. If it be possible, as much as lieth in you, as, as try with all your might. Does everybody understand that? If, if it, because sometimes it ain't possible. 
But don't you be the impossibility. Don't you contribute to the impossibility. Everybody understand that? If the devil going to be the devil, let him be the devil over there. Don't you help him. He don't need your help to be the devil. Does everybody understand what I'm saying now? So he says, if it be possible, as much as life in you, do what? Live peaceably with all men. Does everybody understand that? Everybody see? As we have to make sure we have exhausted everything. That's, that's the only way you're going to rejoice in hope. When you have exhausted everything, I have tried everything. <laughs> Some of you have heard me tell that story before of my sister and her, her husband, who he, he's deceased now. They were in this Pentecostal church, and uh, they went up to get prayed for. And the, the, the man of God asked them, what, what do you need prayer for? They were up there as a couple, and there's a long line behind them. And they said, we, uh, we need prayer for our finances. We want the Lord to bless us, we, you know, because we're behind on some stuff. So we, we want prayer for our finances. And, and we've done everything that we could do. We've done all that we can. And that man of God looked at them and said, you lying spirit. You have not done all. You go in that corner and repent. Both of them just skedaddle over into the corner and get on their knees repenting. And they say they looked behind them as they were walking and other folks getting out of line, sitting down. Yeah, because this is a real man of God here. <laughs> they had not done all. They'd got money <laughs> for something in their home, and they had this money sitting to the side because they wanted to add on to it. When the money was, should have really been going to pay their bills. And if we're not careful, that's how we can be. Lord, I've done all. And the no, and, and Lord will tell us the same thing. You lying spirit. You have not done all. You're part of the problem. <laughs> so you see that if it be possible as you know my wife and I when we got married we got married in, in Louisiana under what they call a covenant marriage and it is it, and every state don't have that but we got married under a covenant marriage that means that I can't get tired of her one day and just go to the lawyer to find an attorney and, and just draft up some divorce papers and, and, and subpoena her to go get a divorce. Before we get a divorce, you know, before it's even possible, I think we'd have to wait some years. We'd have to go through some extensive marriage counseling under that covenant marriage. Does everybody understand that? And that's the way we ought to be in anything. When we get in it, we ought to be committed. And so that's the way we ought to be when it comes to living at peace with all men, if it's possible. Some folks are so demon-possessed, you know, it might not be possible. But we have to make sure that we are doing our part. The devil don't use people just for the purpose of using people. When the devil comes for you, he comes for you. For The idea is this, for you to get bitter, for you to make you look like him. In, in a situation, you won't know who the devil is when the, when the believer have yielded, you know, to, to bitterness. You, you won't be able to tell who's saved and who's not. They both start looking the same, and that's what the devil won't. Does everybody understand that? And you've heard me tell this story about the, 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 the put, pit bull and the skunk. There's not a pit bull in this world that can't whoop a skunk, but they will try to keep, keep their distance. They know better than that. Everybody understand why? Because he'll be smelling like the skunk. He might kill the skunk, and no doubt about it, a pit bull can whoop a skunk. But he knows he better not try. Because if I tangle with you, I'm going to smell like you. I won't have a girlfriend either. <laughs> That's the way we have to be. Let's not tangle with flesh and blood. 
let's do our war on our knees. Does everybody understand that? All right. Verse 19, dearly beloved. You see the, the passion? This isn't John talking. You know, he talked like that. You know, the disciple John, he beloved this and my brothers. And, but Paul is really trying to reach people. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves. Does everybody understand that? I know for a fact, through my own experience, you can't beat the devil at his own game. It's impossible. I don't care how crafty you think you are. You ain't going to beat the devil at being the devil. It just ain't going to happen. Even if you're full of the devil, you ain't going to beat him at being himself. <laughs> Does everybody understand? You can forget about it. <laughs> the devil's going to always have something one up on us. And so what we have to do as believers is trust God. Uh, this is a good time to share this story. After my ex-wife and I separated, uh, you know, uh, she was trying all kind of stuff. And, I, and I'm not telling this story uh, to make her look bad or anything like that. You know, I don't. Uh, but, I, you know, I have to tell the truth, you know. But it's not to shame her or to make her look bad in any way. But, you know, sometimes when, when, when there's a separation, women going to carry the torch of the bitterness in that if they're not careful, you know. And so uh, she was doing all kind of stuff to try to provoke me and, you know, get in my face. And I've, I've shared some of those things with you all. You know, you know that's, that's what made me know that it was a spirit there. Because that stuff, it was just not natural. You know, you would think when, when, some, when, when you the one that leave, you done left. You gone. You, you, you're over who you done left. But, but sometimes, and that you're done with them, but sometimes the devil ain't. And so I had a, a dream that I was sitting in a vehicle, and I'd gotten out, and uh, she, she walked up, and she said, you know, uh, you know I can float. And I, I'm standing on the side of her, and I look, I say, oh, really? She said, yeah. She said, well, look. And so she started floating. She floated about a foot off the ground, and then she went back down. And I said, yeah, you, you, can, you can do that. I said, but that's the power of Satan that you're doing that under. I said, I can float too, but when I do it, it's under the power of God. And, and I said, watch. And I, I went up in there a foot, and then I came back down. And then she said, yeah, but you know, I can go higher than that. I, I can float too. I, I can float higher than this foot. And w when she started floating, she went up about six feet in the air and came down. I said, well, you know, you're doing that under the power of Satan. I said, but... What I do, I do under the power of God. I can float just that like high like that as well. And so I went up in the air about six feet, and then I came down. And then she said, but you know what? I can float, but I can not only do that, I can turn cartwheels when I go up in the air. So she went about 20 feet up in the air and started turning cartwheels and come down. And I said, yeah, I, I, see, I, I see that. You know, but again, you're doing that under the power of Satan. I said, I could do the same thing, but under the power of God. Watch. And I went up in the air, you know, about 20 feet and started turning cartwheels and came down. And so this went on, seemed like forever. Before you know, we're both in the clouds. Doing all kind of stuff and coming down. And, you know, we were cordial. Oh, you can float. Yeah, that's nice. You're doing that under the power of the devil, though. But I do it under the power of God. There wasn't no, you know, mean spiritedness or nothing like that. Just us both showing what we could do. Except hers was under the power of Satan. Mine was under the power of God. And God, the last time I came down from all them cartwheels and everything else I was doing up in the air. The Lord spoke to me and said this. You can't beat the devil. You can't outdo the devil doing what he does. See, that was the trick of the enemy. You go up, come down. Oh, you, well, you know what? I got, the, I got the Holy Ghost. I can go up and come down too. I was going to be wasting my time trying to one-up the devil. So the Lord said to me, you can't beat the devil doing what the devil does. So what? You, t you can go up in there and come down 
under the power of the Holy Spirit. That, what does that matter? He said, you beat the devil by stopping him from doing what he's doing. He said, the next time she go up, you command her to come back down. Don't let her go up. And so she, she spoke it again. Well, you know what? Yeah, I, you can go a mile in the air. I can go two miles in the air. And, oh, yeah, for really? Show me. And, and, and when she got about a foot off the ground, I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, you come back down. And she plopped back to the ground. That stopped all of that. So I woke up from that dream. It was my day. I had to go pick up the children. And it was always something. She was going to always try something. And so I prayed, Lord, I don't know what the devil's got planned today. You ain't got to show me all the ins and outs of it. I'm going to obey that dream. In the name of Jesus Christ, I command that devil to act right when I get there. Now, usually when I showed up, you know, it was, the house was in an uproar and, you know, the children were all upset. And it, just, it was just chaos. But that day when I went there, this is what I saw. She was sitting on her sofa like this. I knocked on the door. The children said, come in. I came in. Y'all got y'all stuff? They said, yeah, we got it. And the whole time I was there, she was sitting there like this. She was floored by that prayer. Everybody looking like a zombie. Does everybody understand that? So in other words, as long as you want the devil, you got him. But devil, you sit still. <laughs> everybody understand that? <laughs> so that's how we do battle. That's how we war. Don't try to outdo the devil because just the fact that you just the fact that I was going up in the air, I was out of God's will. God didn't call me to go to, to, to repeat what the devil was doing. Amen. He called me to make that devil sit still. You be still. Does everybody understand that? So look what that says. Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. Everybody see that? For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, saith the Lord. This, this is designed to protect our hearts. I, I tell you this, as long as we fight in the war, we take God out of it. When we choose to fight it, we take God out of it. And, and I mean in our own way. Does everybody understand? Verse 20, therefore, if thine enemy hunger, do what? If he thirsts, give him drink, for in so doing thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Does everybody see that? You see your enemy have a need, you take care of that need. Let them know you ain't in the war with them no more. I'm not going up in there during turning cartwheels with you no more. You win on that front. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to love the devil out of you. I'm going to maintain my, is, it, my love walk. I, because if God is on the inside of me, I can't help but to love, no matter how ugly you've been with me. Amen. I'm going to love you. And my love is not going to be with hypocrisy. It ain't going to matter to me how you're acting, what you're doing from day to day. I'm going to love you the exact same way. Amen. That's to protect your heart, to protect your mind. Does everybody understand that? Because listen, the devil comes to kill, steal, and destroy. Not from what, not from what, you can't steal something that's yours. So he ain't talking about, that's not talking about stealing, you know, stealing the, the peace and joy of the world. He already got that. He come for your joy. He, he come for your peace. He comes for your sanity. Does everybody understand that? And so this, verse 21, be not overcome of evil. Everybody see that? Does everybody understand what that word overcome mean? You run in a race with evil. And evil's on your trail. Right behind you, as long as you're walking in the love of God, evil will be behind you. But when you get bitter, bitterness is a weight. And when you get bitter, it causes you to slow down. And now evil can overcome you. Does everybody understand that? 
Yeah, it, it can overcome you. And so we're told, be not overcome of evil and don't let evil overtake you. Does everybody understand that? So look at what it says. But outrun evil how? With good. That You have to outrun it. Devil, I saw what you're trying to do. I, I can go into some stuff that my ex was doing. I, it was some crazy stuff. I was accused of stealing a car that had my name on the title. Had the whole town calling me. What would you do this time? I was, I was asleep. I don't know what did I do. <laughs> yeah, the word is you done stole a car. Oh, okay. <laughs> so we be not overcome of evil, but we overcome evil how? Let's go to the 18th chapter of the book of John. The 18th chapter of the book of John, and we're going to start reading at verse 10. Is everybody there? Verse 10 says, uh, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it. Of course, you know what has happened. Jesus Christ just come out of the garden of Gethsemane praying, and as he was coming out of it, uh, the service of the high priest came to arrest him with Judas leading them. Now, they didn't know Jesus by face, and so Judas told them, uh, uh, the man that I kiss, that'll be the one. He's, he, he's, he's the one. He's Jesus Christ. So the man that I kiss, that's how you know who to arrest. So they, so it says, so they came and they laid hands on him, and verse 10 says, Then Simon Peter, having a sword, drew it, drew it and smote the high priest's servant, and cut off his right ear. The servant's name was Malchus. Isn't that something to give us his name? These people, so for Judas to say, have to tell these people, the man that I kiss, that's who you arrest, that means that they didn't know him. They never heard him preach. Everybody understand that? They, did, they didn't know about salvation at all. So the servant's name was Malchus. Then said Jesus unto Peter, put up thy sword into thy sheath. The cup which my father hath given me, shall I not drink it? Does everybody understand? Don't you know we all got a cup to drink? We all got a cup to drink. And if we take on this, this retaliating, we're telling God, I'm not going to drink that cup. I don't want to drink it. Does everybody understand that? We have to know whatever people are doing behind the scenes with all the ugliness and the demons that they got, that's all the design of God. It's all a design of him. Does everybody understand that? How do you crucify your flesh if you're not going through something? Everything lovely in my life, I ain't got flesh to crucify. I don't even know flesh is alive until the devil raise up. So that's how I can gauge where I am in the Lord if I'm being tried. Does everybody understand that? Think of it this way. Your tribulations tell God how much, how much homework you've been doing. Have you been going home to study? Okay, well, we'll test you when you get to school tomorrow. And I'm going to tell you something. Your whole life in your Christian walk, you're going to have all kind of pop quizzes. 
It, it, not, it ain't a surprise if they tell you tomorrow when you come in, you're going to take a test. So your whole life is full of pop quizzes. The devil just show up, appear in front of you and punch you right in the gut with something. And you have to decide, listen, that's why we prepare beforehand. I've, I've been doing my homework, devil. I ain't been slacking. Does everybody understand that? And so we have to know, first of all, as believers, we have a cup to drink. No matter how nasty it is, in our minds, everybody understand what the cup is? It's, it's a cup of suffering. It's a bitter cup. Does everybody understand that? And so he says, put up your sword. Put your sword up. This is why I was born. The Lord, God, look at what he says. The cup which my father hath given me. Not the devil. My father has given me this cup. How can I be mad at it? Now you have to think about your life and what's all, what all is in that cup. Ex-wife is in that cup. Hard-headed children in that cup. A horrible boss in that cup. Everybody understand that? Bitter wife, bitter husband in the cup. All of it's in the cup. And, but you have to know God has given you that cup. So when you refuse the cup, you're refusing God and his process for you. Does everybody understand that? So that's what we're talking about today. <laughs> the ear of Malchus. Isn't that something now? If you have your Bibles, let's go. Now let's go to the. Twenty second chapter of the book of Luke. The 22nd chapter of the book of Luke, and we're going to start reading at verse 47. Verse 47 says, And while he yet spake, behold, a multitude, and he that was called Judas, one of the twelve, went before them and drew near unto Jesus to kiss him. But Jesus said unto him, Judas... Betrayest thou the Son of Man with a kiss? When they which were about saw that he what would follow, they said unto him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. Everybody see that? So they asked the Lord a question. When they saw what was about to happen, they asked him, Lord, shall we smite with the sword? But they answered their own prayer. Yes, smite with the sword. Everybody see that? Isn't that what we do? That's what my granddaddy used to say. Some people answer their own prayer. Lord, what you want me to do? No, I got it. Everybody understand that? And so verse 50, And one of them smote the servant of the high priest and cut off his right ear. And Jesus answered and said, Suffer ye thus far? In other words, permit it. Permit it. Don't, don't, y'all back down. Now, now, now you know why the rest of them, now they all had swords. But now you know why the rest of them didn't, didn't just tear up into other ones, the other ones that were standing there. It, Jesus told them, permit it. Now, who was it that smote the servant? Peter. It was a few other ones there that had a sword. But Jesus told them, permit it. Does everybody understand that? And he touched his ear and did what? So we see in this, in this particular version, this gospel, that we see Jesus, uh, Judas going up to kiss Jesus. That was their sign of who they were supposed to arrest. Again, they did not know him by face. That means they did not hear what he preached. 
Does everybody understand that? Do you see what Jesus' response was? Here was a man coming to lay hands on him to take him to his death, and he understood that. But you know what the Lord did? He picked his ear up off the ground and put it back on his head and healed him. Now, why did we name this message the ear of Malchus? Because having eyes to see, they will not see. Having ears to hear, they will not hear. How can you be overcome with the evil of people who don't, don't have never heard the gospel? Who don't know what it means to live for the Lord? Does everybody understand that? He had never heard. That's the, sim- that's the symbolic what the Lord is trying to get you to see. It was, he was a man coming to lay hands on his God, on his creator, and he didn't know it. He didn't know that. He didn't know what he was about to do. He didn't know, I'm, gonna, I'm about to send you to your death, God. The times that I should be worshiping you, I'm going to persecute you. I'm going to kill you. But you see what the Lord did? He picked up his ear. I'm going to give you a chance to be able to hear. You ever wonder why we have these? You, you know it's not these that hear. It's what's on the inside that hears. But you know what these does? If you ever put your hands behind your ears, these catch sound waves. These allow you to hear stuff that's further away. Does everybody understand that? So what we see is this man did not have the ability to hear anything that was right that wasn't right in front of him. And that's the way we have to look at people that are allowing the devil to use them. They don't know any better. Does everybody understand that? And, and listen, how many of us were born saved? None of us knew better until the Lord picked up our ear and put it on our head. So what we do, instead of doing what Peter does and making his situation worse, <laughs> we do what the Lord did. You, you, you mad, huh? Well, we need to pray for you. Lord, give them ears to hear. Lord, help them to understand what they're doing. Because they don't know. Does everybody understand that? Let's go in the same chapter. Let's go to chapter 20, uh, the same uh, book, chapter 23. Uh, Chapter 23 and verse 33. We'll start reading there. Is everybody there? Verse 33. And when they were come to the place, which is called Calvary, There they crucified him and the male factors, one on the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, do what? Curse them? Hurt them? Let them know who I am? Father, forgive them. Why? Why? For they know not what they do. They don't understand. Forgive them because they, they, don't, they don't understand what they're doing. Does everybody understand that? That's what gives us the ability. That should be our motivation for praying for our enemies. Because they don't know what they were doing, just like we didn't know. Does everybody understand that? Not long after I had the dream that I told you about earlier, I had another dream that I was in a courtroom. And uh, the judge was sitting up there on the bench, and he was about to render judgment. And my ex-wife, she come in to the courtroom, but she didn't come in walking on two feet like, you know, you and I walk. She came in, bent over backwards, walking like that on all fours, but backwards, with her stomach up to the ceiling, if that makes it. Everybody understand? With her stomach, she come in like this. And she was just, you know, just moving around the courtroom like this. And she come right up to me and twisted her head up like that. And she said, you don't love me. I said, yeah, I love you. 
I love you, but it, it wasn't like a, a husband-wife type of love is what she was talking about. That wasn't the love she was talking about. I said, yeah, I love you. I said, why do you say that? Why do you say I don't love you? She said, because you're not pleading my case before the judge. See, she was the one on trial. She was about to get judged by God. And the only thing that was going to stop it, what the Lord was showing me, was my prayer. So she said, you, you don't love me because you ain't pleading my case before the judge. And so then I knew from, from that moment to this, I've been praying for her. Lord, she, she blind just like I was when I was out in the world, and you didn't take me out of here. And I pray that you'll turn her heart, put her ear back on her head. Amen. Does everybody understand that? And so that's the way we pray. Lord, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. And we know that that is a prayer we can stand on when folks are doing things ignorantly. Do they, they might have an idea in the front of their mind. Yeah, I, I'm evil. Yeah, I'm bitter. But I'm going to tell you something. Your enemy think they're just as right about what they're doing as you, what you think you're right about. It's the devil have convinced them in their minds, I'm just as right as you. I'm, I'm the one right and you're the one that's wrong. Does everybody understand that? I, you know, when my ex-wife and I were married, I, I would say, come on, let's, let's have a Bible study. Let's pray together. I don't need to pray with you. I got my own relationship with God. And she thought she was right. People that are not living for God, you know, and, and may not even be aware. You know, you, you ask the average person in the, in the, in the world, uh, are you going to heaven? Yeah, I, I'm going to heaven. I'm a good person. People think they go to heaven because they're good. And in their mind, they really believe they're good. You know why? Because they're able to justify their evil by what they perceive somebody else has done. And you have to know the condition of people. You're blind. You don't know. Does everybody understand that? You don't know what you're doing. If, if you did, well, you, have any of us ever known anybody like that? Just as silly as they want to be. And they don't even know it. That's, that's how you know something's off. I need to pray for you. And, and, and I would be in the same boat you're in if I respond to you the way you're responding to me. I'm not going to go up in there and turn cartwheels no more with you. That's just a waste of time. That ain't solving nothing. Because everything I can do, you can do. The only thing, so what was the difference in the first dream that I told you about? I had the power to shut her down. She didn't have the power to shut me down. I had the power to make that devil be still. Does everybody understand that? Now, that? now that is the war that we fight. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. What? Through the pulling down. You come on back down here, devil. I'm, I'm tired of doing cartwheels. I, I got something else to do. <laughs> Does everybody understand? So we see what the Lord said. Forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. They don't understand. You know the God will forgive them for that? Does everybody understand that? Now let's go, let's go one last place. Let's go to the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. Does it make any sense? Hmm. Is everybody there? The fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. We're going to start reading at verse 1. It says, Therefore, seeing we have this ministry... As we have received mercy, we faint not. Everybody see that? In other words, we rejoice in hope. We have patience in tribulation. We're not going to faint. Verse 2, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness. Everybody see? So you see what happens when you're up in the air turning cartwheels with the devil? Even if you're doing it under the power of God, you, you can be walking in craftiness. Does everybody understand that? nor handling the word of God deceitfully. 
but by manifestation of what? The truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. Let's, let's pay close attention. Verse 3. But if our gospel be hid, what's the problem? It is hid to them that are what? Lost. When people don't see what they're really doing, when people just out there acting a plump fool and doing all kind of crazy, silly stuff, it's because they're lost. They don't know any better. You have to really believe that. You could think in your mind, well, how can they not know any better? I'm telling you how. It's hid from them. Amen. Just like it was hid from us. Is hid. Let's go ahead and keep reading. Verse 4 In whom the God of this world hath done what? Blinded. What can some unbeliever do when the, the devil have blinded them? What defense do they have? The God of this world have blinded them. Does everybody understand that? Have blinded the minds of them which do what? Believe not. So what do you do? You pray for their salvation. Lord, get them saved. Why? Because that's really the only hope they have. You cannot expect people of the world to have the same insight that you have. How many of you ever been around somebody that was completely deaf? How many of you fussed at them and yelled at them because you got tired of, you know, talking to them? Does it make sense? Does it make sense to yell at somebody when they're deaf? I know you hear me. And you know that's a pet peeve of mine. I do not like being ignored. Is that going to do them any good? They sitting there doing it. And you fussing and yelling. I know I'm, I'm yelling. I know I got a loud mouth. And I know you can hear me somewhere up in there. Listen, when folks are deaf, they ain't playing. And when the devil have blinded people's minds, they ain't playing either. They're doing what they are programmed to do until the gospel of God come and shine in their heart. Does everybody understand that? Verse 4, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So we have to pray, Lord, help them to see what they're doing. Help them to come to themselves. Does everybody understand that? We have to realize until then they have the ear of Malchus is on the floor. That ear ain't doing them any good. And it's not until the Lord Jesus Christ himself pick that ear up and put it on their face. They'll have ears to hear then. Then they'll be able to look back just like most of us can, can look back and say, you know what? I was stupid. I was, what was, what was I doing? And why didn't y'all tell me? Yeah, we told you. Does everybody understand that? Yeah, some folks got the nerve to be mad because you didn't tell them. Why you didn't tell me? Because <laughs> you were deaf, that's why. And no matter how loud we yell, you wasn't trying to hear it. And that's the way, you know, we have to give people the same grace that the Lord gave us. We have to know where they are. And when we find out where they are, don't get mad because they're there. You pray that the Lord bring them to another place. Does everybody understand that? Jesus Christ is the only fix. He's the only fix. You, listen, I, I tell anybody, you can't reason with the devil. Come sit down, devil. Come over. Won't you, you like coffee? Well, come over to my house. Let's talk. That you ain't he, now he'll come drink coffee. <laughs> but I can promise you, he ain't going over there to be convinced of nothing by you. Does everybody understand that? You ain't gonna ever hear the devil say, Yeah, you right. Yeah, you right. I you know what I completely missed it on this one. That ain't going to happen. How many of you ever just tried and, they, and folks just, no matter how you try to talk to them, they ain't going to never admit they wrong. 
some of you in here, just in case. You, I, I, I don't see it. I know you don't. So what do we do? We pray that God open eyes. Put ears back on the side of faces. That's, that's the only hope that people have is Jesus Christ. Having, they need to have ears to hear. Does everybody understand that? It, one thing we have to realize is that there is nobody that's not saved that's good. Nobody. If they're not saved, they're not good. I don't care how many good deeds they're doing, they're not good. You can, what did Paul say? Though I give my body to be burned. If I have not love, it, it don't profit anything. People will give their lives for folks for, for, for selfish reasons. So when we come to that conclusion and we know that it's Jesus Christ that makes us good, then we know that's the hope for them. Does everybody understand? So you don't get, don't get mad at people because they're letting the devil use them. They, 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 listen, if you just ever sit back and think about it, I was like you at one time. I was exactly like you. Does everybody understand that? I, I remember, I, I know me. I was, I was letting the devil use me. Blindly, I was blind. And in my mind, even when I thought, man, I, I, don't, I don't stepped out there now. I could justify what I was doing by how you made me feel. I'm justified. You're going to have to get over it. And you know, some of us have even said, well, God's just going to have to forgive me. <laughs> Uh, does he? <laughs> he ain't got to do nothing. <laughs> Everybody understand? <laughs> so some of us were foolish enough to say that. God, well, God don't have to forgive me for this. I'm, I know what I'm about to do is wrong. No, you don't. If you did, you wouldn't do it. That, that's part of the deception of being blind. People think because they can see a little bit that they're not blind. They halfway understand, yeah, I don't want anybody to hear about this. But if it's in your heart to do it and you do it, you're still blinded by what you're doing. You're still blinded by the God of this world. Does everybody understand that? And so my prayer is that we really hear what the Lord is saying to us today. Let's not avenge ourselves. Let's not return evil for evil. Let's not be overcome of evil, but overcome evil how? What good? What, what good did the Lord do? Oh, is that your ear? Let me put this thing back where it goes. Let me heal you. Now that's one thing that we have to know. If we don't take anything else from this message, let's take this. When people are being used by the devil in, 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 in the kind of manners like what we've heard, we have to know there's some healing that needs to play, take place in them. People do things because they hurt. And you ain't going to hardly get people to admit, you know what, I'm hurt. That's why I can't stand you. I want to stab you in the forehead right now. <laughs> but I'm hurt. Will you pray for me so that this knife don't, don't sink in or whatever? People cry out. You, you know, that's one of the reasons why children get rebellious. They, they too, too grown to sit down and say, you know what, mama, I don't feel like you've been the mother you're supposed to be to me. I, I wish we could have a better relationship. Daddy, I wish you could be in my life more. You know, I, I'd really appreciate People ain't going to hardly say that. But, but when daddy calls, they ain't going to answer the phone. Mama bring home some cookies, they're going to eat half of them. This is, I'm acting out. Everybody understand that? People don't, people express hurt differently. Very rare do people really become honest and say, you know what, I'm hurt because I don't have the relationship with you that I'd like to have. That's not what happened. All of a sudden, they take on a lying spirit. You know what, I'm a, you're going to have to figure it out when, when you go in the refrigerator and see all your cookies are gone. You'll know then. <laughs> or do they? Does everybody understand? Uh, people do some weird things when they hurt. In, instead of just saying, I'm hurt. I'm going to hurt you. That's how you're going to know I'm hurt. When people set out to hurt you, that's how you know that they're hurt. 
Does everybody understand that? And what we have to do, we have to pray for them. Lord, heal them. My prayer is that we heard what the Lord had to say. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, we thank you for this word today. Thank you, Lord, for sharing these things with us. And God, we ask that you will help these things to sink into our hearts, Lord. Help us to be obedient to the things we've heard today. We know, Lord, that the enemy is coming for us to steal our joy, to steal our peace, to get us to operate in flesh. But, Lord, we pray that you will help us to understand that this is all a part of the process that you've given us, Lord. That this cup that you've given us, we have to drink it. And Lord, help us not to be bitter when we're drinking it. Help us to know that this is all a part of your will. And Lord, right now, we pray for all of our enemies, Lord. Those that the devil is using to come against us in any manner. Lord, we pray that you will open up their eyes and their ears, Lord. And God, we ask also that you will place in our hearts the good that we can do to them. Lord, you know every individual and every situation, Lord, where something is lacking. And so, Lord, we pray that you will help us to know how to be a blessing to those that are cursing us. How to be a blessing to those that are persecuting us, Lord. And give us a will to want to obey your word in this area. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. All right. If that's all now, we'll go and be dismissed. We'll go to the back and discuss this just briefly, the things that the Lord was speaking to us about. So if that's all, we're dismissed in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ.